It's helpful to look at a simple example of how people react when they hear a fire alarm. It's quite often not how you would think. We've got some hidden cameras in this room and have invited a group of people to participate in what they think is a market research session on education and training. They've been told that they're going to take part in a group discussion and be interviewed in a separate room once they've filled out a short questionnaire. If you could just make a start filling out the questionnaire and then we're just going to have a bit of a group discussion afterwards. So we won't obviously keep you any more than the hour. So thank you very much for coming as well. So I'm just going to um, nip out to see if there's any other latecomers or anything. And um, So if you can just start filling them out, that'd be brilliant. The trainer excuses herself from the room and leaves the participants to complete the questionnaire. Research shows that if people don't know what's happening, it can have an adverse effect on the way they behave. They often don't react at all when they hear an alarm or smell smoke. They go into denial. They don't think they're in danger, and so they ignore the situation completely. The group is totally unaware that we're about to set off a fire alarm in the corridor outside the room. It'll be a conventional fire bell. Let's take a look at how our group reacts. <laughs> As you can see, they all hear the alarm, but they don't really react. Though they do start to talk about what might be happening. The group is displaying a classic behaviour pattern. They don't know how to interpret the alarm. People often talk amongst themselves or joke about evacuating the building and don't take it very seriously, even though they have no way of knowing what's going on outside the room they're in. They try to gather information from sources around them, but unless they're able to convince themselves that there really is a fire, they will not move. They wait for someone to take charge and tell them what to do. In fact, the amusing discussion of whether they should leave the room or not is soon forgotten, and they all return to filling out the questionnaire. Three and a half minutes after the alarm has been set off, a lady finally gets up from her chair. But only to get a drink for herself and the people she's sitting with. And she soon returns to her seat. The alarm continues to sound. It's not until a further two minutes has passed that one of the participants actually gets up and leaves the room to find out what's happening. Notice how she exited the room. This is another piece of classic behaviour, going out the way you came in, when it might not necessarily be the safest way. Notice on the other side of the room there is a fire exit. This leads directly outside the building, a much quicker and safer route of escape. So in total, Five and a half minutes passed from the start of the alarm to someone getting up and taking the lead. In the event of a real fire, time is of the essence and minutes wasted could be fatal. This proves that if people only have a single stimulus, the alarm bell, they don't know what to do. They need more. Uh, today we were all sitting in a room completing questionnaires and a fire alarm went off and we all kind of sat here and looked around and mentioned the fact that there was an alarm going off. Um, and we all just sat. <laughs> um, I just thought maybe it was an alarm test and um, just assumed that if it was a real life uh, fire or, or whatever it might have been, that somebody would have opened the door and said, get out. My first reaction really was, OK, I suppose we better, we better sort of make our way out. And then obviously I looked at everyone else and nobody moved. So I, so I thought, well... <laughs> OK, I'll just wait and wait and I'll just carry on with the form. And it, it honestly didn't seem that long that the alarm was going off. I think everybody was looking, everybody sort of looked around um, and we didn't react because we kind of 
were following like little sheep for each other, I think. I think the general thing was kind of, okay, we're not gonna really, we're not going anywhere. Let's just finish this off and wait. I think, I think the general thing was everyone was waiting for something to happen. You could see people looking at each other thinking, you know, is somebody going to be coming in in a minute? A lady sat there, I think, said, um, she said, do you think we should get up and go? And then no one really sort of responded to that, so she sort of kept quiet. I have to say I wasn't particularly bothered. I um, was a bit sort of nonchalant about it because I have worked in um, large organisations that have frequent um, fire tests, alarm tests, and uh, so it didn't freak me out and I just thought, you were right, <laughs> which could have been wrong, because it might have been that one occasion where it wasn't all right. I started feeling a little bit uncomfortable the longer the alarm went off, and I suppose in the beginning I did want to, I did want to leave. But I think it's probably human nature. You expect someone to come in and say, right, you know, there is a drill. Um, I mean, I half expected everyone to be sort of piled out in the car park, and us just sitting here. But you do, you know. <laughs> That's, that's what's going through your head, but in reality, you just sit there and, and wait for something to happen, some, some sort of direction, which obviously didn't happen. So. Especially if you're not a very confident person, and I'm not saying I'm not, but um, especially not a very confident person would expect somebody else to take charge, and nobody took charge, and so we all just sat here. But you're right, you should react to it, but to, even in shops and things, when you hear it, People just carry on unless someone physically gets up and says, OK, everyone out, you don't do anything. Our experiment and responses from our participants confirms that a conventional alarm sound does not provide enough information to get people to take action. So there's a need for more information. How would the same scenario be different if we introduced a fire warden into the situation? Let's take a look. As before, we've invited a group of people to join a market research session. The trainer makes an excuse to leave the room while they fill out a questionnaire. The alarm bell sounds. So it out. Yeah. <laughs> you will see that the man in the centre of the screen is noticeably anxious. <laughs> but because no one else appears to share his concern, he decides to do nothing. There is little reaction from the participants until a fire warden enters the room. I'm going to walk out that door and there's going to be fire everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows we're here. <laughs> Have your attention, please. The fire alarms have been activated, so can you please make your way to the fire exit? Leaving a personal belonging, please. Shortly after the alarm sounds and the fire warden has entered the room giving clear instructions, the room is empty. That's compared with the five and a half minutes that it took the first group to leave. Proving how differently people will react in a situation given more information. Initially, the fire alarm goes off. I'm expecting it to stop because most of these things do. Um, but it kept going and I, I kept looking up. Um, actually, I was trying to look for smoke uh, on each of the exits. Um, I didn't actually notice the fire escape sign above the door because, I don't know, I would always assume fire, alarm, uh, fire escapes to be marked as red. Um, and I didn't see anyone else moving, but as time went on, I started to get a little bit uh, disturbed about the fact. I felt a bit sort of nervous and apprehensive. Um, and I did wonder whether it was real. So I looked around and saw everybody else, you know, seemed to be carrying on with the questionnaire. Um, and I was a bit worried because of the room that we're in, you know, it seemed sort of quite enclosed. So I was looking around for the fire exit and saw the one behind. So I was just really waiting for somebody to come in and, and tell us to, to leave, really. Once it's sort of carried on for a while, I noticed a lot more people were looking around thinking, what, what is going on? Which made me start to worry a bit more, thinking, 
I better start doing something or something, someone better come in and tell us what to do because no one was coming in. Uh, initially it was a bit of cause for concern, what's actually going on, this doesn't seem right. Um, then because of directions of everyone else around, she was, if there was something to panic about, everyone would be panicking. Initially we didn't move because we thought we had to carry on doing the questionnaire. <laughs> I mean, it's only when the uh, fire warden came in that we, we then stood up and moved. Well, when the man came through the door um, with the bright yellow jacket on and asked us to evacuate, then I thought, oh, crumbs, this is serious. As soon as he walked in, everyone had full attention on what he had to say. Um, and as soon as he said, get up and make, make your way to the exit, we, everyone just done exactly as we were told. There weren't no questioning about it at the time. Um, I don't think anyone wanted to question it, really. But I don't think if, he, if there was no one there to take the leadership, we would have sat there for a while. And having uh, a specific person come in uh, clearly with a vest on, so you could see that he was something to do with the building, um, to tell us that it was, uh, it was a fire and we should all leave. Um, I don't need to, anyone else to tell me twice, that's it, I'm gone. It was certainly very interesting to know that we hadn't been forgotten and that someone came and tried to find us. I was relieved that he came in, but especially since he was like, you know, you knew what he was there for. I was relieved that someone was actually going to take charge and like take us out of the building, rather than us just sitting there not knowing what to do. I think without the fire warden, people do just tend to ignore the alarm. They assume until someone comes and says something's wrong that there really isn't anything wrong. And it is probably just a fire drill. And at the end of the day, people don't want to have to go out in the cold and they'd rather just carry on doing what they're doing. This experiment clearly shows how important the role of a fire warden can be in a fire evacuation situation. With clear and confident instruction, the room was emptied swiftly and safely.